This video is designed to be a line item demonstration of Survival Flight's balloon pump operational competency for the purpose of satisfying the minimum requirements for its use during transport. For additional education on counterpulsation physiology and overall basics, Teleflex has an outstanding educational website. The Survival Flight Aero AutoCAT two-wave intraaortic balloon pump competency can be found in the clinical education folder of our Survival Flight shared drive. The balloon is inflated during the diastolic arresting phase of the cardiac cycle. This allows blood to flow retrograde in order to increase coronary artery perfusion. Subsequently, the balloon is deflated during ventricular systole to allow for a reduction in afterload or resistance that the left ventricle must pump against. The actions of the balloon inflation and deflation are aimed at reducing oxygen demand and improving delivery. When verifying an appropriate position by chest x-ray, the radiopaque tip should be approximately 2 centimeters distal to the left subclavian artery or at the second or third intercostal space. This is about the level of the first thoracic vertebrae or T1. Alternatively, look at the carina. The balloon tip should be approximately 2 centimeters above this. Check the left radial pulse for strength and quality to ensure that the balloon is not occluding the left subclavian artery. Likewise, assess for adequate urine output to ensure that the balloon isn't including the renal arteries. At the base of the pump, locate the power switch. Determine helium level by the electronic gauge in the lower right hand corner of the screen. When indicated helium level gets below 100 psi, it is a good idea to change tanks. Verify that you have access to a spare tank. There is usually one in the utility bag attached to the pump. Find the door cover to the helium tank and open. Ensure that the isolation valve to the helium tank is closed. Turn the nut on the tank collar counterclockwise to loosen. Remove the tank collar and inspect the small gasket sealing the helium inlet. Insert the replacement tank into the collar. Line up the pinned connections on the tank and collar. Tighten the collar nut by turning clockwise. Open the valve on the helium tank, power up the pump, and assess helium level. All right, so what we're going to do is we are going to zero the arterial line. So you have three um, arterial pressure select indicators. One is the monitor, which uh, you can actually slave this to the bedside monitor, which we never use. The transducer, which we use about nine times out of ten. And a fiber optic option, which we will rarely use because our pumps uh, don't have that capability. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the transducer and then automatically it'll come down here and it'll have us zero the transducer. So we'll go off to the, uh, the patient, onto air, you'll get a flat line, and then we'll go to transducer zero. It'll tell us that we're zeroed, and then we'll go back onto the patient and we'll be set. All right, helium's attached, ECG electrodes are on the patient and taped down. We've zeroed our arterial line and we've attached it to the, uh, the insertion site or the catheter. And we've got our trigger established. Find the helium line to the pump that you are changing from. For our purposes, this will be a McKay, formerly known as Datascope model. Next, 
locate the balloon insertion site and identify the arterial line transducer connection, the fiber optic cable, and the helium supply to the balloon. Of importance to note is that recently our transport teams have noticed an increase in the number of capped connections to the transducer site as we are currently unable to utilize a McKay fiber optic balloon on our aero device we need to have a transduced arterial line in order to effectively utilize our pump during transport therefore if the capped connection is clotted off you will have to transduce a radial arterial line connected to our aero AutoCAT two-wave pump. Next, select the appropriate balloon pump adapter, either a 30, 40, or 50 milliliter size. We use the 40 milliliter balloon adapter for the vast majority of our patients. Now, remove the helium line from the McKay pump, cut the end of the blue helium adapter line, and connect the two. This can easily be done with a blue Christmas tree adapter that we keep in our survival flight stock room. One issue that we have recently discovered is ineffective augmentation due to too much helium line being added. While it facilitates ease of transport, the dead space in the line limits augmentation. Therefore, it is now recommended that we either shorten the line or remove altogether from the collar of the balloon adapter on our aero device. It is recommended that you let the pump performance guide your decision during transport with respect to how much line to have. We're in an autopilot mode and so now we're ready to start initiation of counter pulsation so all we have to do is hit on and you notice that this down here is the balloon inflation waveform you've got the arterial pressure waveform with an augmented arterial pressure timed off the R wave or the ECG lead we've got a systolic pressure of 98 diastolic of 68 with an augmented pressure of 127. So we're working pretty good. So if uh, we were need, needing to change right now, we're in a one-to-one -one timing uh, assist ratio. We can uh, change it to a one-to-two. And that's how we would uh, establish uh, whether or not we need to uh, change our timing at all. We can't do it off a of one-to-one. You can do one to four, or even a one to eight. So if we have a patient on, say, another device like an Impella uh, and a balloon pump, the Impella is going to be doing all the work. The balloon pump's not going to be doing much, but we don't want the balloon to, to clot inside the aorta, so we just want it to inflate and deflate every once in a while, so we keep it at a one to eight ratio. We will briefly review the fiber optics system on the AutoCAT 2 wave. However, the only time that we would use this in transport is if we had a pump with a fiber optic module and were taking a patient that already had the AutoCAT 2 wave fiber optic system in place. With that said, most of our pumps do not have the fiber optic module. Pumps that do have the fiber optic module are typically housed in the cath lab or CVC OR. Fiber optic catheters will have a blue cartridge and a black calibration key that fits into the pump as shown. As the catheter is calibrated in vivo, once the appropriate components are inserted, zeroing is simple and done upon selecting the appropriate AP source on the pump. So typically, the, uh, in, in an autopilot mode, the uh, balloon pump can time to the, uh, the needs of the patient way better than we can in manual mode. Uh, even in the presence of arrhythmias, this balloon pump uh, can time way better than we could manually. But 
in case we decide that we are uh, smarter than the balloon pump for some reason, we can go to an operator mode. So if we go to an operator mode, we'll just come down here and hit operator. And now we're in operator mode and the balloon inflation and deflation marker is here. And we can time this uh, off the, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll time it off the arterial pressure waveform if we're doing this manually. So what we're going to do is I'm going to stick it in a one to two assist ratio so I can actually see uh, patient's inherent uh, arterial pressure waveform as well as the augmented arterial pressure waveform. And you see up here, this white line uh, is going to correlate with inflation and deflation. So uh, we want to start inflation at the dichrotic notch, which indicates the closure of the aortic valve. And before the next arterial uh, pressure pulse beat, we want that deflation to initiate. So we want, we don't want to have the patient, uh, we don't want the balloon inflated uh, while the left ventricle is, uh, is trying to contract. So we can adjust inflation and deflation. Inflation is on the left, deflation is on the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my inflation a little bit earlier to establish um, timing with the dichrotic notch. And so it's going to take a couple of, uh, couple of cycles for me to get it right with the dichrotic notch. But again, I'm looking at the, uh, the white line here. And so it looks like I'm about at the dichrotic notch and it looks like I've got really good augmentation. I've got a decent blood pressure, 106 over 65 with a augmented pressure of 137. And my deflation, I'm gonna try to prolong that deflation a little bit and uh, do it right before the next systolic beat, if I can to optimize my, uh, my inflation and deflation. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you really quick dangerous timing errors. So the dangerous timing errors uh, for this is early inflation and late deflation. and late deflation. So I'm gonna set my deflation really late and I'm gonna set my inflation really early. So what that's gonna do is it's really going to impinge upon the arterial pressure waveform and basically what that means is the left ventricle has to work against the balloon that is still inflated. And you notice what's happening is the uh, arterial pressure waveform is getting a little bit smaller and I'm gonna do it to the point where it's really dangerous um, and it'll show my my augmented should show my my augmented pressure uh, I've got a higher augmented pressure and what should happen is my systolic pressure should drop considerably um, actually the the the, uh, the pump will will set an alarm um, when the inflation or deflation marker is set beyond uh, the safety level. So I'll just reset that. Insufficient time to deplate. Check for that. So early inflation, late deflation um, are, the, are the timing areas. Well that's all for this video. In the next video segment we will discuss additional troubleshooting and securing the pump into our transport vehicles. Thank you for watching.